to another fantastic episode of Hourglass, episode number five. My name is El Shima, and I'll just kind of throw it in because it's been a while, but for whatever reason, if you do not know me, I am an independent freelance model. I host my own podcast, which is Hourglass, which is what you're watching. The purpose of Hourglass is kind of to showcase the life of a model and as well as bringing other creatives on the show um, every bi-weekly at least if I can or wait no every two weeks if I can I don't even know and I'll kind of just run over things that I go through things that I experience things that I feel should be shared um, for individuals that are looking to pursue modeling or if you are a photographer and you just want to know what us models have to deal with on a daily I also bring creatives like I mentioned to share showcase what they go through so I've already had a photographer I have a model later on this episode I'll showcase or inform I don't want to use showcase too often I'll inform y'all who's going to be next week's episode a special guest and yeah so I'll have a variety of different people come on the show to kind of just let y'all know what their life is like and especially if you're interested in that career path especially in the arts you have somebody to kind of like ask questions and that's the biggest thing too I'm a cutie butt titty. Hey! <laughs> um, but that's one of the biggest things that I do these podcasts live is that you have the opportunity to ask questions immediately and get answers immediately. Um, so everyone on Twitch, you're more than welcome to comment on the chat. And as well as everyone on Instagram, you can do hearts, you can do comments, you can do whatever your heart desires. And guess what? If you have to leave at any point, because I know my episode is going against Blackish and a few other stuff in life, no worries. It will be posted on YouTube and SoundCloud, so you have really no excuse to not really be watching or listening to my fantastic episodes of Hourglass. <laughs> All right, guys and gals. I will say guys just because that's kind of like the norm for me. I don't know why. I just that's what I go with. But don't take it to offense if if that's your thing because this is not something you should be taking to offense. Anyways, um. Episode five, I kind of wanted to kind of get into the idea of fitness. It's something that as a model, I have to really stay on top of on a daily. Um, It also kind of trickles in, trickles in, trickles in the um, idea of who's the special guest for next week. And it's also something that I just want to share with y'all. I've actually been working on my fitness for six years. I was not born with this body, and I'm still not going to, like, die in this body by just normal, natural causes. Like, I have to work for what you see here, and it's still a work in progress, and I'm really hoping a nip won't slip, so just kind of bear with me as I readjust my titties. Um... (laughs) So anyways, um, let me see. Everyone's on uh, Instagram tonight. Hey, thanks for the charming. Uh, I try it just for y'all, seriously. I think when I'm not like out and about, I'm just very like on the couch, just chilling and stuff. So I kind of also wanted to start before I get into my crazy. This is like the longest list of notes I had for an episode. But before I get into this craziness, I kind of wanted to showcase or share stop with the showcase. I wanted to share um, what I just experienced literally two hours ago or so. So here in Detroit at the Detroit Institute of Arts, I think that's what it stands for, the DIA, the museum here in town, they basically hosted an event with um, moderator, let me see, Andre Leon Talley and special guests, Isabel Toledo, as well as, um, oh no, Ruben Toledo. I'm trying to remember the names as best as I can. And Francis and I ended up going to this event, and it was just basically, Andre was interviewing, asking questions in regards to the Toledos, and kind of figuring out who they are. And I, I know my storage might be full, and silly, silly, silly Instagram. Anyways, um... So yeah, if you don't know them, Andre is basically a uh, editor in chief or editor at least in Vogue, and he's just this huge persona and personality, and he just knows his way in fashion and the arts. He has a whole line of books and things that he's been a part of. Just look him up. I literally will be giving no like good description of who he is. And then the Toledos, we have um, 
Isabel Toledo, who is a fashion designer, and her husband, uh, Ruben Toledo, who is an artist. And they basically kind of just talked in regards to their life and answering questions and kind of helped, you know, answer um, Detroiters' questions that were in, in attending the show. And so everything was fine and dandy. Um, some of the things that they shared for everyone was very informative. But one of the things that kind of caught me off guard and made me have like a weird kind of feeling at the end was during the last like it ended up supposed to be like 15 minutes but it ended up being like a good 30 minutes where they did Q's and A's and it was all fine but a lot of the people that you know had the microphone in their face or whatever to ask a question they either didn't necessarily ask a question and some of them would give like thank yous and I appreciate you coming in Detroit and all this other stuff which was good and all but like the first person asked a question um kept kind of like not really going anywhere with the question and it ends up finding out he didn't even really have a question it was just to more appreciate them which is nice but then also to start talking about his photography and some other things just about him and it just didn't seem like it was really necessary because in my mind this whole event is catered to Toledo's and I, again, I think having a thank you is really appreciative. Everyone loves that. But then you sh he should have at least either brought it back to the Toledo's or kind of just stopped at a thank you and just left it at that. And he wasn't the only one. And there was nothing necessarily wrong with it. It's just these, these are my opinions. And this is also about, you know, with my episodes, a lot of the things I say, a lot of people might disagree with. And that's completely fine. That's how the world works. And if you do disagree with me, by all means, you have the right to do so. Um, I always say take what I say with a grain of salt because, my God, some of the things I may say might not make sense. But anyways, and then I, just throughout the whole Q's and A's, it seems like a lot of people were kind of like throwing their names at them um, in hopes that they would grab their attention. It makes sense and the reasons why they were doing it. Like I can understand. You have Andre Leon T Tally here who is editor in Vogue like he is super like basically famous in that world and if you had his contact or if he knew who you were you might have an up in life um and same thing with the Toledos if they saw your work and appreciated who you were you know I can understand the cause for these individuals to kind of like yes give self-promotion and don't get me wrong, like self-promotion can be very helpful. I mean, I have to do it on my social media on a daily almost, pretty much so. Um, and there's a time and a place, realistically. I just, as a viewer to all of this happening, I didn't feel like the Q's and A's I mean a lot. There were a lot of people that were just giving questions and thank yous and that was it. But it just felt so overly, overly whelming, overwhelming <laughs> that there was just so much self-promotion and no cateredness to the Toledos. And because it's it's their event, they're the ones that should be sh like in your minds. You should be asking questions for them, not throwing your name and hoping that something will grab. Like literally there was a moment where um, this one girl with a jewelry line, and by all means, it might be the most fantastic, most expensive, most exquisite jewelry line I've ever seen. I haven't checked, so I have no idea. But at the end, she was more aiming it um, towards uh, Andre, which happened also as well. And he's, you know, as well as high as Toledo's are when it comes to fame. So, I mean, it's totally fine in my mind that people would ask him questions. But towards the end of her, like, question or whatever, her self-promotion, I don't know what she was doing, she kept, like, saying, oh, well, can I have your phone number? Or, hey, what's your email address? And you can tell, you know, he kind of just wanted to a little bit move on from it. Um, so he's like, yeah, if you come back to I'll give you my email address. And kind of went on to the next question. It's just... In that circumstance, I personally did not feel like that was a time nor place to self-promote your work. If you had your own jewelry right then and there, by all means, give it to them as a gift. And then if they want to ask you more questions from there, then that's when you kind of start feeling how the social interaction is going to 
partake and then that's when you can say oh yeah this is my name and this is the work I've done or whatever the case might be and that's just kind of wanted I wanted to add is self-promotion is very beneficial especially if you're an artist or if you're somebody a business owner or whatever the whatever you are it can be very very helpful but just keep in mind it's a time and a place and I know there was an opportunity that a lot of these people saw and again I don't mean them any harm I see where they're coming from and and I see the cause. It's just at the end of the day, outsiders such as myself kind of got a little bad taste in their mouths. And it's just it didn't it didn't fit right. It didn't feel like it was what it was supposed to be. And hopefully the Toledos and Tally handled, you know, thought the event went superb because that's what we want in the end is them to be like, oh, Detroit's awesome. Let's come back again and do some awesome events and bring in more cities into this city and all this other stuff but anyways that was my little rant for the evening just because it just happened and i kind of just wanted to share my thoughts you're more than welcome on twitch and instagram sorry instagram i know some of y'all have been saying some things um but if you have any of your additional thoughts to it disagreement or agreement by all means go ahead and share i will try my hardest to read it especially on instagram um okay breathe because you know sometimes when you get like in a rant you get all heated and stuff (laughs) so yeah this episode I kind of wanted to get down and dirty in the regards of fitness I mentioned it episode three I do believe where I kind of dabbled with my fitness for a good five six years basically ever since I started modeling And sorry for those that have already watched episode three. I will repeat this again because I'm pretty sure I did say that this, that, this, what I'm about to say last episode. But when I started, or actually right before I started modeling, I didn't take good, good care of myself. I would, I was working two jobs. I would eat fast food every three meals a day. And I would get, obviously get barely any sleep because of two jobs And there was just really no thought of like working out on top of it. I, growing up in grade school, I remember when I was like five, my mom put me up into soccer because my older brother and older sister both did soccer and they all got these trophies and everything. And so it's kind of the norm too, at least in America, where when you have a child, you just pop them into some sports, either that be soccer, basketball, football, whatever. So that's kind of what my mom did. She just popped me into soccer, and I realized I did not like running. I just didn't like it. Something about soccer, I just didn't want to do it. I'd rather go play with my toys and go hang out in the cul-de-sac or something. And so after the first, like, what do you call it, season, I kind of just quit. I just didn't do it. I didn't even care. I was five. I mean, hell, I don't even really remember, honestly, but that's at least what my mom said is that I just pretty much didn't want to do it and I gave up. So from there, um, by the time middle school hit, I it was interested in track and field, but when I was interested the most was doing hurdles. I was the best, or at least second place as far as the best goes with hurdles. Um, And so one of the things that I learned after doing a lot of, you know, those activities was running's okay, but I like doing it short distances. So I performed in the 100 meter dash, I did the 100 meter hurdles and the 300 meter hurdles. We'll say this, 300 meter hurdles, 300 meter hurdles, oh my god, 300 meter hurdles (laughs) was horrible. For a person that only likes short distance, I think only doing 100 meters was, like, the max. So doing anything more than that kind of, like, got me, like, I really hate this. So anyways, I would do track and field for a good time in middle school, and then that's when right, when seventh grade happened, I joined uh, the basketball team. And I didn't, I didn't know nothing about basketball prior to trying out. I had my next-door neighbor actually trying to teach me the ropes, and I remember the first like scrimmage that basically shows the coaches where should they place you or even if you should even belong in the team in the first place. Um, I didn't know what they were saying to me with the lingo and what I really was doing. All I knew is just dribble the ball, don't try to hold it, and shoot when you think you have the opportunity to, and then just chase the ball again and try to get it, get it back <laughs> on the team. So when after the scrimmage done, they I guess they noticed there was potential in me of some sort, 
but it wasn't good enough to be on the A team, which is like the A team. It's literally the best team that they had. And instead, they stuck me with the B team, which is totally fine. I have totally rocked that damn fucking team. I'm pretty sure, actually, if I can recall right, we had like no lost games or at least kind of like we might have lost like one or two games it was pretty badass while a team was fucking sucking no offense y'all but you kind of were um and so (laughs) i kind of learned basketball from doing that but after a while i ended up being like known as the rebounder i would literally just snatch balls i accidentally like elbowed a girl in the face and she really hardcore mean mugged me the entire night um, didn't say sorry because, A, it's basketball. I don't give a fuck. Um, so anyways, I did basketball to track and field. Um, eventually when high school started, I realized I didn't want to do basketball anymore. It just wasn't what I just, I'd rather have hung out with friends by this point. And so when high school started, I kind of just got into dance because I needed an athletic um, credit and I didn't want to do sports, so I thought dance was an easy way out of it. And so that's kind of what I did. And a lot of times in my high school, I pretty much just slacked. I really did. I was not a good child, honestly, especially in grades and school and stuff. So I don't know why you're listening to me. <laughs> not a good influence. Um, do, good in, good, do good in school, kids, if there are kids. I really hope they're not anyone under the age of 18 watching this. I mean, because that just seems weird. And if you are, just don't tell me. Um, (laughs) so yeah, just majority of my grade life, I never really got, was never really active. I would do it here and there, but nothing really stuck. And so by the time I was 18 and trying to work and save money and just trying to figure life out and all that fun stuff, um, I just kind of like started even slacking even more. Just I didn't do anything. And fortunately, I was at a young age where my body didn't go too crazy, like as far as weight went. But there were times when I had a round stomach or something along those lines. I really don't know. It's really hard for me to think how I looked seven, eight years ago. I just, whatever. You can probably find photos of me back then. I'm not sure. I actually don't even do that. So just don't. (laughs) So I know a lot of people feel like fitness is hard and I will be one of those people to tell you yes it fucking is it's not and I know everybody says this and everything but it's goddamn true technically in my mind fitness doesn't really necessarily get any easier now with that being said it does once you like start running one meter then you go up to two meters then you go up to three meters Obviously, that one meter is going to be a lot easier running at three meters than it once was when you first started. In that sense, yes, it's going to be easy um, because your body starts to adapt to changes like that and starts getting used to, okay, I was able to run run a mile, so let me aim for two miles. And that's where I mean where it doesn't necessarily get any easier is because once it technically starts getting easy, then that's when you should realize that you need to amp it up a little bit. You should challenge yourself a little bit more. And then that's when it kind of gets harder because I haven't ran two miles before. I know I've ran a mile five times, so I know I could probably do it, but let me just give it a shot. And in that two miles, that first two miles, it might be fucking brutal. And for me, it is brutal. <laughs> Even a mile is brutal for me. Um, and so just with fitness in my mind, it never necessarily gets easier. You can make it easy, but when it's getting to that point where it's that easy, like especially if you're lifting 10 pounds with like it's nothing, like it's butter, obviously then you should probably add it to 15 or maybe 20 or maybe eventually 50 pounds because you want to try to like challenge yourself and see what your body is capable of doing. So everyone knows moving in general is just healthy for you. There's been tons of studies and if you are like me right now and sitting in your chair or sitting on the couch or even sitting in your car, although I do not know why you'd be sitting in a car, hopefully you'd be parked. The idea of moving is just scientifically proven and we all just as humans need to move. We can't stay still for the rest of our lives because your body starts to deteriorate. An example, uh, what you read. Um, An example, um, elders, when they get to a certain age, 
Their body starts to deteriorate just because that's old age, but a lot of them kind of just um, give up by that point, especially when they retire. They're like, oh, okay, I don't have to do anything anymore, so let me just lounge around and sit on my fanny and then just let life go by the wind. But when that happens and you're not moving, your body starts, you start losing your muscle mass, and then the muscle mass eventually does not even exist realistically so all you are is just skin and bones and that's when you have like bed sores i'm sorry it's really getting really nasty real fast but you eventually get bed sores and your body just starts to die on you because you're not staying active and obviously when you're an older age too you're not i mean i'm not expecting nine year olds to lift 50 pounds or to run Shit, I mean, if I was 80 and I could still run a mile, I'd be amazed. Um, But I'm not expecting 80-year-olds to run 10 miles a day, let alone, I mean, for me personally, let alone a mile a day. But it's just you need to at least walk around. Stay walking. And one of the things that I feel is just a simple simple change in doing that is um, one of the things I've done, actually, is... um, Oh, wait, 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 okay, yeah, <laughs> just checking my notes to see if I skipped around. One of the things that I actually did to kind of alleviate and also help me um, not be sitting for very long is create a standing desk, which I'm not in it now because if I stood for an entire hour, all you would see is me bouncing constantly side to side because that kind of gets really exhausting. Um, but I created a standing desk to keep me off my bum. And I work at a job that does require me to need you get to pose and model and work with photographers and look pretty all the time no i mean yeah i do sometimes here and there maybe um but majority of the time i'm either in this chair or standing at that desk or maybe even on the couch working my ass off on the computer so i have a desk job and another way so other aside from standing desk If that's just not doable for you, especially in the work environment that you just happen to be part of, if that's not doable for you, the other option (laughs) is uh, just getting off the chair every 30 minutes to stretch your legs or to just move your body or go walk um, to the water fountain or just something just to get off the chair. And it's, it, again, scientific evidence shows that if you at least get off the chair every 30 minutes and just at least just get up, it does a lot more to your body. Um, H4RRI3R on Twitch. You ask what happened to the guests. The guests come every two weeks. So I had a guest last week. I'm going to have a guest next week. If I had guests every week and I've done that before, it gets really hard on me because there's a lot that I need to do. And I just sometimes I also want to just talk to y'all. So it kind of gives me a one on one kind of moment. Um, so, hey, you spelt my name with an I, but it's okay, because that's why I capital it all the time. It's an L, but I see you slip. Um, I would pronounce your name, but I'm not sure if I could. Rosuke Hiro? I feel like that's Japanese, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, and let me just love you. And then they have exercise bikes with laptop stands now. Yes. Exactly. Thank you, I am vocabulary. They do. Um, Aside from like standing desks or getting up every 30 minutes, there is newer technology in the sense where you can get a medicine ball and just sitting on a medicine ball instead of a normal chair can be a lot better for you. Um, They have treadmills, standing desk treadmills. Um, Now they have desks where they rise to be a standing desk and lower to be just a normal desk. Um, and then also they have, like I am vocabulary mentioned, bikes with laptop stands now. There's so many alternatives to get your bum off the chair for more than 30 minutes to 5 hours to 8 hours that a lot of people are used to. And don't take this episode as me like forcing you to be healthier or whatever. I'm more stating facts and being informative as best as I can. It's up to you and you to make yourself healthy. No one's going to force you and no one technically should force you. If you're happy being overweight, 
by all means, be happy. Who gives a fuck? But if you are noticing a decline in your health or some situations that just would be better suited if you were fit or at least just lost 30 pounds, maybe you should go that route. Um, it is going to be a long journey and it's not going to be easy, but it's all worth it. Trust me. Um, I personally was never necessarily overweight. I mean, my sister told me if I was, since I'm 5'3 and 130 pounds, technically we're like 10 pounds overweight. But I mean, I feel healthy and I feel like I don't give a fuck. So I, I like realistically, like I more support the idea of being healthy than anything else. And if you're putting good things in your body and you're just at least moving around and being active as best as you can, by all means, I mean, hell. I mean, shit, if we are... Uh, technology can make people that play video games constantly get up and stand up and just move around like this, shooting bad guys while they're like in the matrix, basically, then by all means, I support that because to get a video gamer off the couch is an improvement. Um, so yeah, there's multiple ways of just just moving. Um, aside from just being on the computer, I know some people will be like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing that, it is honestly just taking the stairs. A lot of people do say that. Taking the stairs instead of elevator, I know, sucks. There's um, the college that Francis teaches at that, that sometimes I'll model for. Their elevator is the slowest elevator I have been in my entire life. And so what happens? It's so much faster and easier, kind of to take the stairs. Now, I work out on hopefully almost every day. I'm not gonna lie to you, going up three flights of stairs, actually it's one, two, three, four flights of stairs, um, I get winded every time I get to the third level. I'm like, I work out almost every day and I can't even go upstairs. And I also skip steps just cause that's me and I like to skip steps. I think I'm a badass when I do that. But honestly though, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, or escalator, always a good um, suggestion. Just just throwing that out there. Obviously, if you have a shit ton of stuff, um, I don't suggest it unless you want to be super badass, carrying like 50 pounds up of three flights of stairs. Yeah, that doesn't sound like something I want to do. But if you want to do it, go for it. That makes you even more awesome and cooler than me, honestly. Um, is it possible to use a decent height for a desk? So also, if you use a desk, either a sitting desk or a standing desk, I have learned you want to keep your arms at 90 degrees while typing, pretty much. So this desk right now with this chair that I have is actually not really good because from Instagram you can see, but my arms are kind of more like a, what was, is that like 45 degrees? I don't really know, but it's not 90 degrees. So the best way of just figuring it out is as long as your arms are at 90 degrees, so from your elbow, see, so twitch, okay. Basically, if your arms are like 90 degrees, <laughs> you're good from typing to just resting. Um, so you can, if you either get a chair that you know goes up like a normal rolling chair, um, or maybe you can lower your desk too is always an option, or put like books underneath it. There's there's plenty of ways, guys and gals. I trust me. I've lurked and lurked and looked and researched all of the alternatives for myself. Um, and then another one just to throw out there because I was really thinking of other ways um, is walking to the store or walking, like even parking your car farther um, in the parking lot from the actual entrance. Again, I do this a lot where I'm just like, I don't feel like walking, so I'm going to find the front row Joe and be happy with my life. If that's what I want to do that one day, I mean, by all means, I'm going to do it and I'm not going to complain about it. But it at least helps you in the long term to just park your car, maybe at the farthest spot, looking like a weirdo, <laughs> and then walk all the way to the front. I remember my mom got a Camaro and that was her baby and I hate Camaros. Sorry to offend a lot of people, but I do. I have my reasons too. Don't, don't get on me about it. But, um... She, when she first got a Camaro, she would purposely park it so far away so nobody would ding her car up, <laughs> which makes sense. But at the same time, I mean, it was helping her healthy-wise because she was walking very far um, to get to the entrance. But yeah, nonetheless, you have a variety of ways you can just keep your body moving and keeping it active. 
Um, one of the biggest things that I also recommend um, for anyone is um, finding helpful forums. When I started doing physical activities, I had no one to talk to. I didn't know who to run to to ask these questions. I literally just didn't know where to start and how to do it. And a simple Google research can do so much for you. And we're in a great time of our life where that's an option. Um, and one of the things that I will throw in there, and I always wish I could be sponsored by them because of all the much I throw them in my podcasts. But if you are seriously just interested in fitness in general and just healthy eating and just a lifestyle change for yourself, I personally recommend checking Reddit. <laughs> But um, checking the subreddit fitness, and that's just a general fitness one, although that one's more catered to guys. It's, it's, it's both gals and guys, but it's more guys um, that are find themselves on that subreddit. And if you are a girl and you don't want to be bombarded with a whole bunch of bro questions, um, there's a subreddit called X, X, X Fitness. And that's the one I used and still use and still check and still follow um, to stay current on other people's questions and just reading other people's, you know, concerns and like um, form uh, check and long, things along those lines. And I didn't really mention it and I kind of just like brazed, brazed, gazed, grazed, grazed past it was... um form and I actually no I did put it on oh yay me I did that um <laughs> is form form is one of the biggest things especially if you do plan on lifting um and running to really research into it a lot of people usually tell them to do a squat they're just gonna squat down right but a lot of people actually don't squat right your leg your feet are supposed to actually be pointing a little outwards so kind of like so not straight kind of a little bit out and then your knees never want to go past your feet so when you get down you don't uh, i'm not gonna squat for you because i really don't want to set up the, the camera to do that and also i don't want my outfit to break on me or something but <laughs> but yes um you don't just make sure your knees don't go past your feet um make sure it just tries to stay with your ankles and you're literally just as like basically just trying to get your butt down first you're not trying to just like i don't even know how to do the improper way because i've done the proper way for so long um but you're just basically trying to pretend like you're sitting in a chair but making your butt go down first um, and same thing like with running. I haven't mastered the form of running and I really don't even know. But you can read tons of books and um, tons of forums and articles that will help you kind of figure out what is the proper way of running. And same thing with just like doing overhead presses. What's the right way of doing that to make sure everything is engaged properly. And a lot of the biggest things that I've learned too is you can do core exercises. Like one of the biggest things I want to like fix is the way my stomach looks. But for a very, very long time, I thought I had to constantly do ab workouts to achieve that basically. But I found out that isn't necessarily the case. That can be helpful, especially if you're trying to do like certain positions of the abs, like doing like a cross crunch so you can kind of get the side abs. But a lot of normal lifting exercises such as squats such as deadlifts such as overhead presses such as just I don't know all of the basic lifting material when you do it by yourself you're not having like an automatic machine doing it for you you're always engaging your core and that's really gonna help you develop your abs or your stomach area um and then yeah so one of the biggest things too I feel like I keep saying that as well I know so much stories are almost done. I don't even know why you're telling me that in the first place. Um, one of the biggest things I also wanted to say, because I've noticed this with forums and in real life and even personally with me, girls, if there are girls watching this or whatever, listening to this, don't be scared to lift. Don't be scared to go in the weight room and get on the squat rack or to get on the bench press. Don't be scared. I know it is conquered by men. I know this because when I first started working out and joined YMCA, 
I looked at that rate room area and I was intimidated. It's just all these guys. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, no offense, guys. But it's just all these guys and there's barely or none girls. And you don't feel basically welcomed in that situation. Don't give a fuck. Like, literally, just go. You have to start somewhere. And I know the first time it's really nervous, especially when you don't know exactly what uh, weights or what lifting exercise you're planning on doing and how it's really supposed to look. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Go try it. Just put yourself in there. All you gotta do is just stand there, look around, and then leave. So at least you said, I at least went in there. And then hopefully the next time you go, you actually do something and you lift just a single dumbbell and do one bicep curl and then you can leave and then you can go back another time and eventually you work up to it where you were literally the baddest chick in the entire fucking gym and you're out beating these guys, right? Right? Yes. Um, but no, seriously, no joke. Girls, don't be intimidated by it. It'll happen, but just move past it. And there's tons of girls that have lifted in the weight room and they do marvelous jobs with it. And if there is ever a moment where a guy is gawking you or a girl is making fun of you or whatever the case it is, because that happens crazy enough at the gym, just literally give them your middle finger because if they're going to take the time to laugh at you or make fun of you or look at you in a weird way because you don't look fit or, and this goes for guys too, or whatever the case might be, literally just tell them the fuck off because that's what a gym's for. A gym is for people to get healthy, to get active, and to be awesome. And people have to start from somewhere. We're not all skinny little babies. We all fucking chunky as shit when we come out of our mommy's vagina or their stomachs, whatever. Um, and the opposite goes for guys in a sense. Guys... Don't think yoga is just for girls. Seriously, no joke. Um, I am a girl and I've done yoga, yes. And I am a girl and I've been to yoga festivals where majority of them are girls, yes. But the same goes for the girls going to the weight room. Just because you see a certain race so often in that certain class or that room or in that environment doesn't mean you don't belong. Yoga is great for you. And if you rather just start off doing yoga by yourself at home, which is what Francis usually does, well then fucking do it. Like, at least you're doing it. But yoga, I have seen a good amount of guys in yoga class. And it's really, really good for you, especially if you are tight in certain places or like me and I have bad posture. It helps you kind of realize what your, how your body is feeling and kind of like an ultimate stretch. And I will say, yoga ain't easy. <laughs> it's not easy, especially when you have to hold certain poses. It's not easy. But it's fun, and you do feel a lot relaxed at the end of it. No, not lying to you. Swear to God. Um, Jay Vida, I'm going to answer or read this real fast. Off topic, but are we going to do any not episodes of Be Cool? So really fast, just for Jay Vida and other people that might be confused too as well. Be Cool no longer exists. Hourglass kind of just took that. Hourglass is Be Cool. Um, it's just a new name change. R listen to episode one, um, Jay Vita, which is on SoundCloud and YouTube, which is the same SoundCloud and YouTube I've always had. Um, if you really want to know the full depth, talk about it. But yeah, it's just it's the same thing, but just a new name, basically. And a little bit more Detroit-oriented, honestly, actually, too. Um... Yeah, right? I'm definitely preaching for y'all because I get I get heated and stuff like this. Um, DDP yoga is my is the, is my shit. Love it. Seriously, yoga is the best. And then there's varieties of different kinds of yoga. There's oh, don't even ask me. Uh, there's just so many. There's like we went to a yoga festival last summer, and you have the obvious like um, I can't remember the names, so I'm sorry for not doing the proper terms. But there's the yoga, there's your basic yoga, um, where you're just moving through the poses. Um, there's like the one breath, one movement, where you're literally every breath you're doing, you're in going into a new movement. It's really hard. Um, and then there's yoga also they offer where they will put you in a sauna, basically. <laughs> they increase the temperature to like 110 or something. I personally will never do that. That sounds horrible. That's why I left the South because I don't want to be in 110 degree weather and that sounds disgustingly horrible and I don't like sweating too. 
go figure. <laughs> but I, that just doesn't sound like my interesting. Um, there's elevated yoga, so you can, or actually, yeah, there's, um, uh, shit, where you basically, I can't remember the term, but you're upside down. You can do, um, like handstands and headstands and a few other ones. You can have couples yoga, meaning um, you can be with a partner and work, like do yoga together. And those actually look really cool. Me and Francis tried it once and they're actually really hard at the same time, but pretty awesome just to see somebody do it like in a fluid motion. Um, it just looks so pretty. And it also with that idea too, men aren't always the base. <laughs> we learned that too, because I always thought the men was the one always holding the female partner. But actually I watched a girl hold up a hundred and like third no a hundred and seventy five pound man um and she was literally smaller than me she was like 120 at least um so yeah it's though there's a variety of different yogas that you can try so just if you're really interested in yoga go for it there's also tai chi too which is no one say similar to yoga but as far as relaxing goes um and very like casual like i can't i did tai chi once but it's like you like push the push push the energy away um but definitely those ways if you don't want to be like a serious super like lifting weights and running really fast and doing these crazy like hit movements and stuff yoga tai chi there's so many different like relaxing ways of just staying active honestly um so yeah Girls, don't be scared of to lift and go in the weight room. And guys, don't be scared to go into the yoga room. It's not just for girls. Um, form, got it. Body weight. Oh, also, yes. Body weight. You don't have to. Uh, no, I'm going to count down with Instagram. You don't have to uh, always work out with weights. Um, body weight, you literally are working out with your own body. Uh, mass and so say doing squats you're literally just trying to lift the for me 130 pounds at a weigh and just trying to squat that if I want to make it more intense then I'll hold a five pound weight if I want to make it intenser than that I'll hold 10 pound or hold a ball over my head although I really don't do that because of my traps um but body weight is not a negative thing or like a beginner's thing I still do it and especially if you just want to work at home which would be easier for you Body weight is so simple to do that with, and I still do that personally for myself. Um, so yeah, just look up body weights on Google exercises, and there's a v list of things you can find from that. Um, recreational sports, yada, yada, yada. Instagram, you might end, so I'm just going to have to restart you if you do end, because you will, because I keep saying this. So <laughs> just bear with me in 40 seconds. I will... Amp it right back up if you're really interested. Um, shout out to Zumba. Yes, Zumba as well. Zumba is really hard. Um, Burkham is hot, and I hate being hot, but it makes my body feel so good. See, I mean, that's, that's yeah, I will agree that that could be the case. I just don't want to be in that environment. But yes, it's called Burkham. Um, For the hot 110 degree weather or heat one. Aloha, 808, yay. Um... You just tuned in, but don't worry. This on Instagram is about to end, so I'm gonna redo it again um, for anyone that's just popping in right now. So it's literally I got ten seconds, so I might as well just kind of like, I might as well just end it. Yeah, I'm just ending it, <laughs> and it kind of ended it for me. All right, all right, three, two. One. All right. And everyone's on Twitch. If there's even anyone on Twitch, I feel like everyone that was on Twitch kind of like, eh, deuces. Um, sorry for the connection and it kind of leaving, but I mean, it's been past an hour, so let me do this. Let me unplug my phone on Instagram. Hey guys. And let me actually kind of just end <laughs> this episode. I'm trying to like think what I wanted to say. Um, one of the biggest thing though, I wanted to kind of wrap up. That's what I wanted to say, not end. I wanted to wrap up this episode. And I, one of the biggest things is with fitness and just anything in general, the biggest thing is just maintaining and staying constant. It's hard. I've I've had my struggles and I still have my struggles. I'm not perfect. I literally still am far from it and I'm still working on it. Um, so I'm not the super guru of fitness, but I wanted to at least share my thoughts and experiences and things that I think people should just know a little bit more of. And hopefully this episode was very informative to anyone that was curious about fitness or just anything along those lines. Um, before you leave, I just want to show who's our special guest for next week. 
and her name is Taro Castro. She is actually, let me, hold on, before I start talking about her, because, you know, I get distracted. All right, so let's flip it, flip a bitch. So our special guest next week is Tara Castro. Um, you can follow follow her at Be Bold Tara or at Detroit Body Garage. She actually is. Um, uh, you can do Twitter questions. Actually, you can just ask me questions right now because I can see um, the the text on Instagram. But uh, she is the owner and fitness instructor at Detroit Body Garage here in Detroit, Michigan. And that is the gym that I go to. I highly suggest if you are in Detroit, you should just at least check it out. It's in a historic bank building and it's kind of cool and she's awesome to talk to. But she will be our guest for next week. That's why I also wanted to talk about fitness this episode because I kind of just wanted to bring her in who literally her life is dedicated to fitness for her to kind of share her story and also on top of it, her being a, um, let me flip it over for me, uh, being a fitness guru in that sense and having um, a business here in Detroit and what it took for her to basically make, make that alive and make it happen in the world. Um, so definitely check out Taro Castro. Um, her Instagram handle is at be bold Tara B E B O L D T E R R A, or you can follow her gym Instagram at Detroit Body Garage. That's D E T R O I T B O D Y G A R G E. Yeah, no wait, fucked it up. G A R A G E. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone on Instagram. Sorry, I had to um, switch two different live feeds and all. But I hope y'all enjoyed. And until next time, be awesome. Yeah, let's do it. I don't know what else to end it, but okay, toodles. And everyone on Twitch and on YouTube and on SoundCloud, thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah, it was amazing. And hopefully I may have changed some of y'all's perspective of fitness. Maybe not. But at least you know a little bit more facts and information about it. So that's all I really care for. Just be you. Be happy. Do whatever makes you just be special like the person you are. And don't try to change for anyone but yourself. So if fitness is not your thing and you just never want to do it, then by all means, you don't have to do it. But keep in mind, at least just move. Just get off the chair every 30 minutes if you can, or even every hour if you can, and just stay moving because your body needs that. I know sometimes moving can be hard or difficult for some, and you know it's challenging for others as well, but it's what we as human beings, as creatures, that's what we were created for i don't i don't care what your religion shit is i'm not even going that way i'm just more saying we're human and humans need to move and that's just literally scientifically proven we just need to fucking move <laughs> so eat all you want and do all you want sit all you want but just try to sit less than what you've been sitting now so if you're sitting right now get up and leave and end this podcast right now right now because that's what i'm about to do i'm about to go and get up and do stuff <laughs> it's the point where like nobody's on twitch so i'm just talking to myself all right everyone see you later Toodles.